Welcome back to the PFRPA podcast. I'm your host, Brian DeMarco, and here today with me, I have a legend, a Houston Oilers legend, Al Smith. Al, how you doing today, man? Doing good. How you doing, my man? Well, doing good. It's great <laughs> having you on the show. Finally, I know I know we were scheduling some stuff to do later in the next couple of weeks, but I'm glad you could stop by here as we're in Miami and just be on the show with me in person so much better. I uh, love it. A lot better. Be- right. Better than being on a computer, right? That, that's for sure. That's for sure. Let's back up a little bit and let's kind of introduce everybody to your to your mm. playing career. Where'd you Where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to college? Tell me about where you played pro ball, years, all that good stuff. A little background. Okay. Well, I'm from uh, Los Angeles, California. Uh, grew up in L.A. Um, you know, once I left there, uh, uh, went to Utah State University. Uh, you know, played there, uh, had some great teams, great people, uh, had great experiences in Utah. And once I graduated from Utah, I was able to fortunately be drafted. I uh, was drafted to the Houston Oilers in Houston, uh, which was a surprise. You know, that, you know, you know, a lot of times other teams, you think of other teams, but then Houston stepped up and it was another big city. So it was, you know, that didn't bother me being in a big city and all those type of things like that. But you're going into a new environment, new people, new uh, surroundings and uh, a new life, so to speak. Uh, was able to kind of embrace that, was drafted uh, there, and uh, was able to uh, play for Jerry Glanville, who was my first head coach, who was wow. a personality, obviously. <laughs> Everybody knows yeah. Jerry. And uh, uh, he was a defensive guy. I mean, being a defensive guy and uh, obviously being a rookie was, uh, you know, very tough on me and all those type of things. And, and um, uh kept poking the bear so to speak <laughs> but but it all worked out because I ended up being a starter as a rookie and started my whole career I was very fortunate enough to to never be, have been a backup in the NFL I was was a starter and um, which was a blessing and was able to uh, you know go on and uh, become an all-pro player and all those t- type of things and and was very fortunate to be once I retired uh, after playing uh, a 10-year career uh, was able to be hired into the front office of the Tennessee Titans slash Houston Oilers when right. they moved to Tennessee. So uh, when I retired, they asked me to come to Tennessee, and then I moved nice. to Tennessee and had been there ever since. So uh, with that being said, um, uh, that was kind of in a nutshell. And obviously after uh, retirement, working with the, the organization in, in various capacities of player development, uh, you know, pro personnel, uh, pro scouting, uh, evaluating talent, player development, getting into you know knowing player mindset. Uh, obviously, the type of players that we w- that we wanted to bring in, uh, as far as the evaluation process, you know, combine all that. It just kind of brought everything full circle for me as far as uh, a life um, lesson, so to speak, and be able to you know pass on those relationships and those understandings and those. Uh, uh, trials and tribulations, so to speak, yeah. onto that next generation, which was a, which was a, you know, a blessing to be able to do that, and uh, still there now, do you know, working things with the NFL Alumni Association now, do a lot with that, and uh, just was talking with Bob Smith, and as far as doing uh, some things with the uh, uh, with the retired players organization as well. Uh, doing those type of things, work with NFL. I'm a compliance officer with NFL as far as uh, you know, um, uh, compliance on field with the with the players and their images and and what they're presenting on camera. Uh, working in which that, is a whole different world today. Which is a whole different <laughs> world. So you know, we got so many of these different individual yeah. players and these personalities, and everybody has their own brand. And so you know, you you know, the NFL is just one brand. So they don't like to intermix all these other brands within their brand. And sometimes players don't get that memo all the time, or or <laughs> ignore that memo. So that's where that uh, the fines comes comes to play and what have you. And I'm very fortunate to be on the board of the, the Player Care Foundation. And a lot of times that fun, helps fund that board. Because yeah. I'm like, well, if you're going to give your money, you're giving it to a good cause, which in turn helps players right. that are right, in right. need. So it's kind of like a, you know, one hand helps the other, but uh, in one hand. Uh, uh, you know, players are their violations uh, benefit uh, a player's good too. I, you know, and I don't think I don't think too many people realize what goes on in that sideline with the compliance officer. Uh-huh. About you know, you have to look the part when you're <laughs> on that <laughs> sideline, or you're getting yeah. fined as a player. I, exactly. So you got to look the part. You know, as you know, a lot of individuals, a lot of different oh, personalities, yeah. and uh, but at the same time, uh, it's uh, it's fun. Uh, you're close to the game. You're right there with the action without being in the action, so to speak. It, yeah. uh, you're not tied into the wins and losses when you work with an organization. And you don't you have know, to get hit anymore. You don't have to get hit anymore. <laughs> so, so and all that is good. And, yeah. and I'm able to you know, still um, have great relationships, still be able to connect with uh, different individuals, with different teams, coaches, uh, former 
former coaches, yeah. some former coaches still coaching, you know, and uh, and so you know some of the young players who were young players and now the older players. You see that evolution of guys growing and building and and uh, going into their next phase of their lives and careers, which is great to see. I, I remember the first time. Um, I'm sure you remember Clyde Simmons, right? Yes. So Clyde, uh-huh. Clyde comes over to Jacksonville, and uh, <laughs> I called him Pops, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. So this is towards the tail end of his career, uh-huh. <laughs> and I was like, "All right, Pops," and 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 he didn't say that. He just he just paused for a second, and he uh-huh. turned around, and he came back to me. He goes, "You know what?" He goes, "It's going to be a snap of a finger, and somebody's going to call you Pops." <laughs> he goes, just remember, <laughs> just remember that. Just remember that. It changes quick, doesn't and it? it? <laughs> all of a sudden, you start approaching 30, and you're the old man. I you know, know what I mean? Isn't that crazy? Very. <laughs> yeah, definitely a young man's game. So we, we have some we have some uh, cool things in common here. You, you mentioned that you started as a rookie. Uh, I, I did as well, right, right from the jump. Um, boy, the things I learned from year one to year two, mm-hmm. playing a rookie. I, I remember thinking, brutal man, I, I just played way too hard. Like, like <laughs> the game got easier in a lot of ways, right? As you get older. So, what was, what was your experience like between year one and year two? Well, it was um, for me. It was it was it was great. You know, I was uh, at that time. I was a middle round draft uh, choice. Uh, at that time, they had 12 rounds. I went in the six rounds. So you figure, oh, well, they got a fifty fifty shot to make the team or whatever the case may be. <laughs> right. And, and I had three. Linebackers drafted before me, before I got drafted. Wow. So, so you know, uh, and and one in the same round. <laughs> oh my god! So, so, so you know, uh, so you know, coming in, it was kind of an interesting situation because back then, um, you know, I was you know finishing up school, but they weren't the, they didn't have the rules in place like they have now, where you can't come to can- training camp until your your graduating date, so to speak. Yeah, you know, yeah. so they don't hold that over your head because you know guys won't have to show up to June. They'll come in for a few days after the draft, but they don't have to be there like full time until they're graduated. Yep. yep. Uh, but well, when I came out, it was like, okay, we get drafted. We expect you here. I'm like, well, I'm yeah. on a quarter system. You know, in college, right. remember the quarter system, like you miss, you know, a week or two, you know, you you're done, you're yeah. done, you know. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so it was like, oh man, I'm like at the end here. I mean, this is my last quarter. I'm getting ready to graduate. I can't just scrap it, right. and I don't have no guarantee. I'm not on like a first round pick, you right. know, like for sure. <laughs> right. You know, I, you know, I'm confident in myself, but I gotta get, you know, I gotta have something out this deal. You right. know what I'm saying? So I don't want to go to camp. This is my mindset. I don't want to go to camp, and for whatever reason, maybe out of my control, not make the team. I'm not graduated. I don't have nothing. And you're so close. <laughs> like four or five <laughs> years of school yeah, and you're like, yeah, yeah, right here. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, well, I had to get in a situation where, you know, I you know, talked to coaches. I talked to, you know, you know, uh, a quarterback at the time, Warren Moon, you know, he was a leader of the team. You know, he, you know, said, man, you need to finish school, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, man, I want to make the team. Well, you're going to make the team. You don't worry about it. You know, all this stuff like wow. that. So what I did, you know, I ended up talking, talking to, we're talking with my, you know, the teachers that I had at the time. Well, how much time am I able to miss? You know, they kind of knew my situation. They kind of gave me that parameter of, you know, my (laughs) borderline parameter. And then I say, okay, well, I'll just go to this point and then come back. So, and learn as, you know, so I go to camp, uh, learn as much as I can, uh, do all I can do. And then I I had to leave. And then all the other guys are still there. So I'm like, man, man. So (laughs) I'm like, like they still there doing their thing and I'm gone. And I'm like, okay, well then what training camp is like, you know, it's like all, so all, all or nothing, you know. Yeah. So, but I had a piece because of the fact that, okay, I graduated going to, so now I'm graduated going to training camp as opposed to not graduated going to training camp. So I had a a, a sense of uh, confidence knowing I had, okay, I got one out of the two. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got one out of the right. two. Right. You know, I feel better. So I can look, I, I'm all in now. Yeah. I'm all in on this, on, on this deal. And, um, Oh, uh, you know, you know, w- you know, w- went through the camp process, and then like our third preseason game, I get like a tap on my shoulder, you know, and, sh- and stretch lines, and uh, from the linebacker coach, say, you know, you're starting today. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like thanks for letting me know right yeah. before the game starts. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, you know that that moment. What a heads up! <laughs> right. So no I was pressure. Like, no, hey, no pressure. Twenty one, so, twenty two years old. So here I am, and and that was, uh, you know, you, you know, uh, you know, at that time, remember that was like. Playing the Cowboys, we always played the Cowboys like the third preseason game because you know Houston. Didn't. Yeah, and you got these veterans and Danny White and 
Tony Dorsett was kind of oh, like, a, you know, gosh. he was like winding down and yeah. I'm like, man, I'm like, you know, <laughs> you know tackle these guys. <laughs> right. But at the same time, uh, end up, you know, doing well and he never looked back. And that was, you know, started next week and then the opening day and Eric Dickerson in the back wheel with Jackie Slater and and Irv Pankey and, <laughs> and Dennis Hara and Doug yeah. Smith and you, that great Hall of Fame offensive line. And you got Eric Dickerson sitting back there at the tailback. And I'm like, I guess here it is. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. All right, so, so I have to ask you this. I have to ask you this because uh, I know Jackie well, uh-huh. uh, and, and he's on the board of the PFRPA. So uh-huh. tell, tell me a Jackie Slater story. Ooh. Uh, well, well, one thing. About, oh, Jack, well, one thing about Jackie. I, well, obviously, me being in the middle and Jackie being a tackle, I didn't have to you know, really go against him too much. Yeah. You know, just kind of scraping off and getting around him. But uh, I used to always see how he how he did our defensive ends. Like he always did that, <laughs> he always did that punch to the face. You know how he, oh, yeah. he punch you to yeah. the head. I'm like, man. I said, don't let him do that to you. You know, like <laughs> like I'm like I'm glad that's not me. You know, because because right? uh, you know Jackie always had that he had that punch, boy. He, oh, he punched you, you what. he punched you straight in that in that head. And back then, I, I, they didn't call that that's hand right. to the face stuff as much as they do now, but. It, but, mostly uh, on defense, uh, like with yeah. Deacon and you know the head slap thing. Oh my gosh, defense get called all day, but offense, oh yeah, yeah. But Jackie definitely, you know, obviously is is it was is was a great, a great player and still is it was obviously a great player. But um, but but that was that's oh one of my gosh. memories of, 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 <laughs> of him watching. Didn't have to play. <laughs> Our defense, I mean, we had great defensive ends uh, as well. So. I, it, those were some great battles. I, I remember thinking about that when we were playing uh, the, the Bills one year, and you know, Baselli had this iconic battle during the playoffs against Bruce Smith, uh-huh. and I'm just I'm watching it going, man, I'm so glad I have to play. Because <laughs> yeah. Sam right every play, <laughs> give, give me this slower dude that's heavier over here, <laughs> right? <laughs> but but Bruce was a beast, man. So, I, oh man, I get that. There were some great guys. So, so in the you know, it's we talk we talk a little bit about the the transition that when did it coming out of college and into the pros? When was that first kind of moment where you realized, oh man, I'm in the big leagues now? Like I, I I'm here, I've arrived. Well, well, obviously it was that opening day, you know, yeah, uh, you know, being a starter on opening day and. You, and you know, going against uh, the great Eric Dickerson and that great offensive line, and yeah. uh, all the players that you kind of grew up watching, and uh, that was kind of like my uh, in the Astro Dome, my my great uh, 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 I have arrived moment, so yeah. to speak, if you yeah. want to you know call it that way, because I always looked at um, uh, football as as uh, something that I did, it's not who I was as a person, right? But at the same time, it was kind of two personalities unfortunately <laughs> I guess it's good or bad it's like you know we're all a little bit nuts man <laughs> so we all have two personalities <laughs> so my off the field my off the field persona is totally different than the on the field persona and uh you know obviously as you know a lot of guys can't decipher between the two yeah and it kind of carries over which yeah. kind of gets into you know unfortunately different situations that they probably mm. shouldn't get into but I'm uh made a point of that to be able to try to 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 de- 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 you know decipher between the two right so that um, never would have to go down that road and um, and unfortunately uh, a lot of that that side of what people don't really understand about a lot of athletes is that player side whether that versus you know the mama b- mentality yeah as opposed yeah. to just being a basketball player yeah. or yeah, you know right, what I'm saying right. so yeah, for sure so so, so is people are hearing about that more now, and 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 I think you can attest to it. You totally. know, you on the field, and and you now, uh, you know, you can't imagine. You know, you, you even think back to the things you may have done, or had to have done, or had to do. You you probably well, say, well, how, the, how did I do that, or why why did well, I, I mean, I, how did I even get to myself to do that? Yeah. Well, the, well, the truth is, when I tell people now, that personality, so. Almost forty-eight years old right now. I have about eight seconds of that personality left, <laughs> and I'm saving it for something and really, really, really important, right? Yes. Like the last piece of chicken or yeah. something like that, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, 
you know, I had this thing that I, that I did, and it's funny you mentioned that because it's something I talk about a lot uh, with my my son and his mm-hmm. friends in, in football. Mm-hmm. I had this thing with crossing the, the white line, mm-hmm. where I would literally watch myself take that step over the line, and I would mm-hmm. switch into that other personality, mm-hmm. um, that that kind of gladiator yeah. type. You know, I'm going in there to fight with my brothers, and and mm-hmm. you know to go all out and to sacrifice and you know that whole team thing unity did you have something like that that made you kind of hit that switch well you know one thing about that you talk about the switch off the field the switch off uh, it or uh, how did you get the switch okay. off or switch it on <laughs> well well the, the switch on is like a build up and um with the teammate and it's more of a mindset going into this uh this so-called battled arena yeah and what i have to do to be able to survive in that arena yeah uh whether i wanted to or not you know (laughs) that day (laughs) you still have to find a way to get there you got to get there otherwise it won't be good for you if if you don't get there yep (laughs) now uh uh uh, off the field i avoid those types of things you know because I, i i've tried to avoid anyone taking me to that place of no return so to speak and uh and it takes work and I think that's where you know some guys struggle with it yeah. because of the fact that you know okay so somebody bumped into you you know could set you off or so, okay well you know I might just go keep walking it didn't, yeah. it didn't hurt me I'll just keep on keep yeah. it moving as opposed in your younger days you you know that that, that would have set off something that wouldn't be wouldn't have been nice that's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, we don't. In, 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 I, th- I think too, going off into that personality and how it doesn't mix with like the real world. Uh-huh. I, I think some guys don't understand. Like we, we're trained to punish other human bodies mm-hmm. in a way that the rest of the world don't they don't understand or can't even grasp. Mm-hmm. You know what it takes to manipulate another human body that way or exactly. punish it. And, uh, you know, and I've had a few brief experiences in my younger days about w- w- what that meant in that situation. So I did the same thing and still do it to this day. Mm-hmm. Like, there's things that I will not do. I just won't associate myself mm-hmm. with it. because oh, I don't know put yourself in that position. Ever. You, you know, know, because I, I know that I still have that mentality. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's so even at our age now, there's still, with all of us, I think at times at least, there's a few glimpses where you think, well, I could still do it. Mm-hmm. Right, even if it's a fleeting mm-hmm. thought in your mind, mm-hmm. you know, just for a second. Uh, but I think it goes back to that personality. Exactly. But like, I, I kind of tested to this. I mean, I tell friends all the time. Well, I, I I don't necessarily like that dude. Yeah. That it, yeah. It, when it goes there, you know, I, I don't I don't yeah. you know I don't like that guy. Yeah. So I don't I I don't want to be that guy. So. I try to stay away from situations or people that would try to bring that guy out. Yeah. If you, if, if you kind of understand what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. So, so, so that's kind of like self, kind of self managing yourself yeah. in it's, a way. Well, it's very self aware, which a lot aware. of guys need, especially when you're younger too, yes. I think, right. Being very self aware. Yeah. And as you're older, obviously you won't go there, but it's always there. I really, <laughs> I, 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 it's always there when you need it, when, right? When you need it, when you need it, but case you, of emergency, uh, break glass, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you know, like you say, obviously protect your family, or your yeah, your wife, or you know, or whatever the case may be. You just, but you don't put yourself in position to have to go there. I, I had to explain to my wife one time. I said, I, "You don't even know who that person is. You've you've huh. never met that person. You don't want you, you don't, <laughs> you don't, know, that. You don't, you don't, you don't know that dude, <laughs> right? You don't know that dude. So, you know. so let's 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 go into let's talk about. A, we all have kind of a favorite football memory right mm-hmm. i i happen to have this really cool memory uh about reggie white mm-hmm. uh and it was it actually happened my rookie year it was like the fourth game into the season you know here i am a rookie playing against the all-time sack leader and mm-hmm. you know national tv the packers and the whole world's media is watching mm-hmm. and i'm like oh my gosh mm-hmm. you know <laughs> could there be any more pressure on this game and mm-hmm. So anyways, I, I, I end up getting out of that game, leaving uh, only giving up one sack, which I was pretty proud of, <laughs> to the all-time sack leader. Yeah, um, that's out, of, uh, out of 80 plays, hey. That, you know? That's right, not too people, bad. People, people, people <laughs> look at, hey, I, had, I, I like, stopped them 79 <laughs> times, and you guys are like, <laughs> <right. laughs> 
I chalked it up as a W. I didn't care what the coach yeah. said. So I, I just, you know, after the game, Reggie had come over to me, and actually he jogged across the field. As we were walking in the separate corners, and and uh, and he just gave me a pat on my backside, and he said, y- "You're gonna make it, kid. You did a great job today, right?" And he mm-hmm. gave me that compliment. And I just, it was just nobody else would have ever mm-hmm. seen it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no social media back then, and all mm-hmm. those things. Everybody mm-hmm. with a camera, but it was one of my favorites. What was one of your your memories like that that maybe mm. nobody else knows that, that something that sticks in your head is a is a favorite NFL memory? Well, so many. I I even have you know a, a, I have a Reggie White one as well. But you know, just uh, yeah. uh, not to necessarily piggyback on the on no, Reggie no. White, but but um, uh, Reggie's was for me. Um, I can give you two, but Reggie. For me, was we were on on the bus in Hawaii, going to the you know to a Pro Bowl practice. Yeah, it was a Pro Bowl practice. We're on the bus. You know, you don't get to interact. With, you know how some you don't get to interact, interact with guys with who aren't in your conference or that you don't play. Right. And so we kind of sitting there, and he was kind of you know telling, hey you know yeah, yeah, how you doing da, da, da. you know you know you kind of know everybody's name but you don't know him know him. Right. And he kind of asked me about my relationship with God, right? And um. And uh, and we started having that discussion on, on a spiritual level about uh, the sports and world and and where we are in our lives and, and spiritually and all that. And for me, that was um, enlightening in that he cared enough to ask me or cared enough to talk to me about this because you know in the football yeah. world it's more or less I'm trying to kill you and beat you and win at all costs, all that. Right. To where you have this peaceful uh, aspect or this peaceful moment with someone that you respect as a player and as a man that cared enough about you to kind of talk to you about, you know, uh, your walk as well. And uh, and we had a um, good conversation about that and as far as the correlation between the two and, and what we did and how it's perceived and uh, how we conduct ourselves and, and, and carrying that on through life and 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 that was kind of like a profound moment for me uh not just on the field but um a life lesson yeah yeah, yeah. Re- reggie you know i've had a cu- couple discussions with him just privileged didn't mm-hmm. know him know him but mm-hmm. just those couple of run-ins and i i i loved how empathetic he was like mm-hmm. even in that situation of you know playing in my rookie year mm-hmm. you just got the feeling that well he understood the pressure i was mm-hmm. under playing against him wow. you know okay. and like to have that type of empathy as a man knowing what I was going up against and and all of that I thought I thought that was pretty remarkable and then seeing how that played out with other people because we're not the only two guys with Reggie White stories I promise you I mean so many guys oh, I've yeah. talked to have been just profoundly impacted by him and he, he was just a he was a great man. It wasn't just a great football yeah. player. He was a he was a great man, and I agree totally. And definitely a great loss, a shocking loss. Uh, you know, way too soon, as you know, many guys unfortunately that has ha- things have happened to. And um, and you t- you try to learn and build on those, and and be able to try to help carry those those um, those legacies along in your daily life, as far as how, you know how you interact with other people and yeah. and pass the same messages on to. Uh, you know what uh, the youth or uh, you know other adults or whatever the case may be whoever yeah. you can touch you try to touch who you can yeah and I, and I you know I, it, that's one of the things that's really stuck with me uh, about other people even people that I barely know of just trying to have that empathy mm-hmm. that he brought I mean it really taught me a big life lesson of this guy that he had no reason to come over there and say anything to me he's Reggie mm-hmm. he could you know go on living his life mm-hmm. but the fact that he took that time it it, it literally affected the rest of my life and mm-hmm. even how I treat strangers and how the, you know, the opportunity to work with me, whether it's in business or whatever, and how that may be affecting them. It's, mm-hmm. it's just taught me to kind of view life from somebody else's point of view from their shoes, mm-hmm. you know, so that I think that empathy is a, just a really cool trait to have, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in, in, the, in the sport, in business and carry with you for life, for sure. So let's talk now about uh, about transition it is the buzzword of the last five years at least we see so many transition coaches and everybody's trying to make you know 
make this transition easier now uh, than it ever has been before. Because you know, back when we played, mm-hmm. you know, there wasn't any, there weren't any programs, or you know, you were just dropped off into the void. Now, you were fortunate, I think, in a lot of ways to you know stay in touch and mm-hmm. part of that team. But I think we all experience. There's there's a loss that happens that you have to adjust to, right? In this mm-hmm. new life, what what was your transition period like? Well, my transition period wasn't um, um, wasn't devastating in that along the way when I was playing, I always looked at myself as as football is 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 is, is what I do, uh-huh. but it's not who I am. Yeah. And during the process of playing, it was almost like finding myself as I was playing as opposed to trying to find myself when I was done playing. So that decision of which direction I wanted to go, initially when I, when I, before, I before I even started playing, I wanted to be an FBI agent. <laughs> <laughs> wow. that, that, was, that was my thing, right? But I got drafted, and then I played long enough to where, okay, well, I'm almost too old to be. <laughs> to, to, go <laughs> yeah. to, to, to uh, you know, I was in that little year and a half, two-year window of, of uh, doing that. And I was still, well, do I want to play still? Do I not want to play? And, I was, and then, then the team offered a position. I was like, well, that kind of just, I might as well do it now as opposed to this opportunity might not be here a year and a half from now. Yeah. I still get to work with the team and still be a part of it and all those type of things. So the transition was not as bad I was because I was still a part of the game. Yeah. You know, still was able to experience what a Super Bowl was, still experience the playoffs or experience, you know, you know, working with guys and just dealing with issues yeah. that I've dealt with and being able to kind of – so I was in my element, so to speak, in my environment, and I think I struggle when they get out of that element and environment – because of the fact that that's what we've done all our lives, the structure that we've had. Now we don't have the structure uh, of you know you got your meeting at seven or here at eight or you know this at nine and lunch at you know right. all that's out the door. And now you're at home and looking at you know like okay what's next and your wife or whoever and everybody's looking at you like well <laughs> you know you bothering me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so you, you know guys you know struggling with you know with that dynamic of of who they are, and I think. That's what whatever your, you know, your passion is, you know, outside of the game, and and trying to find whatever that may be and tap into that way before the game ends, whether it be uh, 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 getting experience in another area. There's so many programs now, or or finishing your education while yeah. you're playing, and all these type of things that basically are handed to you now taking advantage of those resources that we may not have had when we came through so that w- when you do get the, to that trend, the transition is not as hard because you've you kind of yeah. put some things in place. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's something I, I, every chance I get to talk to, you know, current players, it, it's like you have to have purpose mm-hmm. and it, there has to be a, a purpose beyond football. Mm-hmm. That I just firmly believe that every man needs purpose, something that drives him and gets him out of bed every morning, right? And without that, we kind of get – that's where a lot of us get lost after the game's over of mm-hmm. just finding a new way to find something as meaningful. Um, so I, I totally agree with you. So to wrap this up, to wrap this up, I want to look back in time. And it, Al Smith now – versus your rookie year. What one piece of advice would you give yourself your rookie year? Uh, to live each moment like it's your last. When you're a rookie, you think, it, oh, this is the way it's going to be. You know, uh, year in and year out. Although I played each year like it may be my last, like, it, you know, you always, you know, you always think you got the next I'm gonna, year. I'm going to play forever. Yeah. Like I'm gonna play forever. <laughs> I'm gonna tip the hat and but, <laughs> but, say adios. Yeah. But knowing where I'm at now, uh, mentally, spiritually, uh, emotionally, as far as uh, living each day to the fullest, not 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 wasting time. You know, you think all the stuff that we t- we wasted time. Yeah. On nothings, you know, when you're young, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and and be able to to start the start. Um, the retirement process, so to speak, at the beginning and not the end. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So true. (laughs) 
so true. <laughs> so true. Even while you're playing, obviously, when I say that, you still want to play. You're still playing. He just got a way deeper intellect than me. He started no. when he was playing. <laughs> it took me a few years. No, oh, no. no this, oh, this has been great. Thanks for joining us on the show, man. This is awesome. Well, well Thank appreciate you so you. much. Man. Appreciate you having me.